Okay, and there you see the scowl, the uh, look on James Tony that has been evident all week. They tried to patch things up on Wednesday after uh, Tony threatened to uh, kill Michael Nunn's bones, to quote him correctly, and then they had another flare-up at the weigh-in last night, and uh, James lights out Tony, 25-0-1. He's yet to taste defeat. He's the fifth-ranked contender. Michael Nunn says he's going to punch his lights out. Well, this is a big night for Michael Nunn. He's, he's had dreams of this coming out before his home fans for a championship for quite some time, and I think he's just... He's got to have some goosebumps right now. It's a happening. And when he gets into the ring, this place is going to explode. Donald Curry, his last fight. It was a tough fight for Nunn for the first five rounds. Curry was in that fight. Should hear a big sound of applause now. Yep. There it is. There's that look of confidence we've seen on Michael Nunn's face many times. Why not? He's 36-0. Yet to be beaten, yet really to be hurt in the ring. I think well, a cut he got against Wal Roldan might be the only time he was really... Well, not, not necessarily in his 14th professional fight. He got hit with the Major League left hook by Carl Jones over at Caesars Palace. There you see the height relatively even. The weight, none right at the max, 160, which he likes to do. None a bit older by six years. The reach, he has two inches there. And there's the average punches thrown per fight. None's got that lightning quick left jab. Tony doesn't throw as many, but makes a little better use of them. His percentage quite a bit higher. There you see the jabs. Well, as I mentioned earlier, Tony's right in front of the fighters at all times. So it certainly makes it much easier for you to make contact as this total jab shows there. The, the IBF rules we're going to be going by, there's a 10-point must system, which means that the winner of the round must get 10 points. No standing eight count, unlike New Jersey, where if the referee wants to decide that. So here you can't have the standing eight count. Referee stops it after and one, fights over. And the undisputed All right, Michael Kip Buffer, Buffer take Weiser it. present the featured bout of the evening in association with the Riverboat, President Casino, Casino here in the Quad Cities. This bout is approved by the Iowa State Athletic Commission. It is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. President and supervisor at ringside is Robert W. Lee. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Gary Murr of Indiana, Robert Watson of Michigan, and Darby Shirley of Nevada. The man in charge of this bout in the ring at this time is the referee, Denny Nelson from Minnesota. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Quad Cities of Moline and Rock Island, Illinois, Bettendorf and Davenport, Iowa, on the Mississippi River, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds for the IBF middleweight championship of the world. Introducing first... Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks and weighing in at an even 157 pounds, he's from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Undefeated as a professional with 25 victories and one draw, 18 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated challenger, James Lights Out, Tony! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, Wearing the right trunks with red letters, he weighs an even 160 pounds. His professional record, undefeated, 36 and 0, 24 KOs. Tonight, he defends his title for the seventh time here in his hometown of Davenport, Iowa. Ladies and gentlemen, the IBF middleweight champion of the world, Michael, second to Michael's got his game face on there, jaw to jaw. I'll tell you though, Tom, this Tony does look ready. We're gonna find out how intimidated he is with this crowd and with fighting for the world title right now. He's been the he's been the villain all week. I think he kind of likes this role. You know, well, some guys like to wear the black hats in the town and uh, take on the hero. We're gonna find out. The first two rounds are very very important right here for Tony. We're going to find out exactly what's going to happen now in this fight. All right. 
Obviously, you know by now, Michael Nunn in the white trunks. Tony in the black, round one. Here we go. This could be a beauty. We'll see if Tony takes it to Nunn right off the bat. He wants to cut off the ring and not let, as he say, Nunn get on his bicycle. Wild left by Tony. Does not land. Michael Nunn. Look at the concentration on Tony. I, you know, I like it right off the bat. I, he's going in there. He knows what he's got to do. And certainly right now, physically and mentally, he looks like he's ready. Tony got up to it. Couple of combination there. Not the ever elusive. Ducks. Not is just always a moving target. Very hard to get a punch on him, Dan. Very quick. Well, as ready as Tony seems to be, the question still is, is he good enough to beat a Michael Nunn? Nunn's a very, very good fighter. Probably the best middle weight out for the day. Nunn came, fought his way out of the streets of Davenport. Some wild lefts by each fighter, neither one landing. There's Tony with a couple of body blows. Michael Nunn trying to pick his spot. Tony, Tony's come out firing, no doubt about it. Good body blow by Tony, catches Nunn in the midsection. Not made his mark fighting his way out of it, literally fighting his way out of the streets of Davenport. He was in trouble a lot as a kid. And has made himself a champion. Good shot by Nunn, right back by Tony. Tony answers that with a good left and a good right. And Nunn posed after he hit Tony with that good shot. He posed, looked at his work, didn't think Tony was going to come back. Then he came back with a few shots. I don't think you can pose too long against James Tony, at least not early on. Two unbeaten fighters here. Tony at 25 0 1, not 36 0. Right by Tony. He has not against the ropes. Still with a couple of punches. To me, I think the key round for Tony are the early ones because of the I feel he's going to be the better of the two fighters towards the end of the fight. The official is Denny Nelson, who worked once last night in France. Tony throwing a lot of power, but none keeps backing away. Nunn always bobbing and weaving. Tough to get a good shot at him, and Nunn got one in there. No, he, he, Tony was off balance. Got hit with a little shot in the chest, but he's just off balance there. He's got a good chin, Tom. Crowd is into this fight. You can see him on the edge of their seats. Good body blows here by both fighters. As we end to the 32nd mark of round one. There's plenty of action so far, Dan Bruce. And this is the type of fighter Tony is. As you can see, he's very elusive. He's very similar to Nunn in that way. You get very good side to side. It's hard to be accurate with your punches against him. That could end up frustrating Michael if the fight goes on much longer. Not doing a, some dancing and Tony with a smile on his face, actually kind of smiling that night, saying, all right, show me your best shot. We're nearing 10 seconds of round one. Tony coming out. Tony looks very strong here. And I think Michael Nunn knows he's got himself a handful. Of There's the end of round one. It's a good even round good for even both round, fighters, yes. really, which, uh, you know, right now with Tony getting to uh, be on even terms with none, that's certainly in Tony's favor. Ned's been the type of fighter I mean, I want you laying it. That's just natural. I'll get back to that side. Don't lay any close. Use your jab. Use okay. your jab. Move over, okay? See, the guy buddy you already, so mm -hmm. I don't want you laying in there. Okay? okay? Don't go for the... He'll give you that much body shot. But to the body and to the head. But keep the left hand up. You're a little busier. Be first. Be busy. Keep backing him up. Mm -hmm. Good advice by Bill Miller to stay busy. He's and been with busy. That, and Angelo was correct with none. He's got to. He's got to use that jab. Keep uh, Tony off of him. I'm sure Tony would like to get none into a slugfest early on. Well, I, was, I want to get back to my point that I was making at the end of the round, that one of the things that Tony accomplished here, where most opponents haven't before, is that none has been very good controlling opponents. For the 35 fights that we were together, I don't remember a round where he didn't really control it. Even when he got knocked down in his 14th professional fight against Carl Jones, he came right back and won the round every other way. All right, Nunn with a little smile on his face now as he's keeping that jab. Not a left-hander. Tony has fought five left-handers before and beaten them all. Nunn's got Tony back up a little bit, and the crowd gets into it. Of course, the crowd's going to roar on anything. Nunn does. Fighters yeah. exchanging some body blows now. Nunn seems to have come out with a little more intensity here in round two. Well, he better because this is a type of fight that's going to give him problems. You can see right now that Tony knows how to, how to stay away from Nunn's power, make him miss. 
Nunn got a left in there. As Tony was just kind of posing on him. Well, the stats, I think, you know, they show like a one-inch height advantage, two-inch reach, but as we've seen, those stats are a little padded. I think Nunn's probably got good two, three inches on him and maybe three inches of reach. You know, it, it, it's funny, Tom. When I saw Tony at our gym, he looked so much smaller than our kid Frank Lyles. And then, uh, you know, I, I didn't think he would match up the Nunn like he did at the weigh-in, but they were very close in weight at the weigh-in. But now, right now in the ring, Nunn does look the bigger of the two men. But Nunn's always seemed to be that type of fighter. The only time I remember seeing Nunn where he looked like he was uh, even with any opponent was Iron Barkley in size. And of course, when you have those weigh-ins the night before, as Nunn lands a few jabs, they have a chance to eat all day, and they gain a lot of weight back quickly. And now, I keep a mind. lot of boxing actually say Nunn's really a light heavy right now. Yeah. Keep in mind, Nunn's a big middleweight regardless. Tony lands a pretty good left there. You can see the sweat and perspiration fly off Nunn's chin as James Tony going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champion Michael Nunn here, the IBF World Middleweight title. At stake. Tony better do more than this, though. I mean, he's showing none that he's a good defensive fighter, but he's got to throw punches at none. It's the only way you beat the champion. None seems uh, intent to go after the head. He hasn't landed too many body blows on Tony. And just as I say that, he does appear. He's a good wrap to the chin by none. As they near the 22nd mark of round two. Well, the leather flew a little bit in round one. Now, round two is the pace is slow, just a little bit. Michael Nunn takes a wild left, left himself open. Tony recovers, tries an uppercut, it won't land. It's hard to get a clean shot in on Tony right now. He's going to have to go to that body. Real low blow right there by uh, Nunn. At the end of the bell, and the official, Denny Nelson. The bell, not a real loud bell here, so some pretty good action after the bell. And the crowd. Loved every second of it. Use your legs, use your speed. Oh. See when you get behind them, like from to get up hey, there. Angelo, now. take it away. I want speed. Give it to me. Open wide. Okay, spit it out. Okay, Michael. I want your speed. Show you want to show this guy your speed yet? Okay. Come on. In, outside the side. Go to your right. Okay? Comes up looking. Nail him. Okay? Well, that punch, Dad, is indicative of Tony's last round. He didn't throw any punches there. Clearly, Nunn's got the advantage uh, in the uh, in the second round. Angelo Dundee wants Nunn to use that speed, as you heard. Of course, Dundee's seen his share of champions. Well, the only thing, though, is that Tony's not no, you know, a slow fighter out there. I mean, he's quick in his own right. He's quick with his feet and his, his shoulders where he can duck away from Nunn's punches very quickly. You, you saw that the last round where he put on a defensive clinic. Good job by Nunn. The right hand got in. There's another one. And another one. Michael Jack. We've got two excellent defensive fighters in there. Right now, Nunn's the more effective offensive fighter. And they're slugging it out in the center of the ring. We haven't seen Michael use the speed that Angelo Dundee told him to after round two. He's uh, preferring right now to slug it out with Tony. But There's a pretty good right by Tony. If that would have landed, that would have hurt. Tony seems to be going maybe a little more to the body than Nunn is right now, Dan. Good right. Good right by Tony there. Good combination. They're slugging it out, these two are. Yep. This is exactly the type of fight Tony wants. Right there in the center of the ring, having Nunn exchanging with him. Right now, with Tony being inside of Nunn, I think Tony's got the advantage there. Sometimes, right off there. Sometimes when animosity builds up uh, in Michael Nunn's career, he's chose to do that. The kind animosity of, kind of is gone right now. No one's thinking about that. They're not thinking about the way, and they're thinking about this fight right now. Body blow by Nunn. Crowd chanting Michael behind us now. M Nunn's got no body into those punches. He's just winging him from the hip. All you can see he's not stepping into anything. Whereas Tony seems to have those feet planted when he throws his blow. Exactly. Uppercut by Tony. 
glances off Nunn's chin. In baseball terms, Nunn's got infield singles. And right there, you can just see Mike's not planting his feet. We're inside a minute in round three, and this has been a very entertaining fight, no doubt about it. And some concern, that staggered Nunn just a touch. Well, Hit him on the top of the head. Got caught more on his heels, Tom. Nunn with a couple of big lefts. Crowd getting into it there. They are throwing some punches. Much more aggressive round for Tony. If he keeps this up the whole fight, it could be a whole different game. Just a beautiful night here. Uh, cool by the river. And even yeah. the glare of the lights seems very comfortable here. I don't think either fighter will be bothered by the by the warmth. Well, I know that I read in the papers today that uh, the, underneath the uh, ring lights that it would be stifling here for the fighters. But really, it's had no effect on, on anyone. I'm sitting here with the full coat on. I'm certainly not working up a sweat. We're ending the end of a very, very, very anxious and exciting round three. There you see the big crowd on in here at John O'Donnell. Giving their fighter all the support he can. But right now, Michael Nunn's got to do it for himself, and he's getting all he wants from James Tony. You hear me? Look here. Quit trying to knock this guy out with one punch and put some punches together. You don't have to go for a home run punch every punch, but get busier with them hands. We just spotted this guy in the last two rounds. There we see the advice of Bill Miller. And each fighter, I think, is trying to end this early. They got KO on their mind. See, I mean, this with the, with this uh, exchange right here, Tony's doing well. He's just not doing enough right now. He's in the fight with Nunn. He certainly, Nunn knows that he's not in there with a pushover. But right now, if Tony wants to win this fight, he's got to put more pressure and more punches on Nunn. As the uh, copy box would indicate right here, Nunn has landed double the amount of punches. And he got five or six in a row on that slow-mo replay you just saw. Good round for Michael Nunn. Round four, ready to go. Not in the white trunks. Tony in the black. Tom Cornelis and Dan Goosen with you here ringside in Davenport, Iowa. The rumble on the riverbank. And it's been everything it's advertised. Tony now trying to take some of the action to Dunn. Kind of caught him with an elbow there. Good jab by Tony. Stop Dunn in his tracks. Michael Nunn's a tough kid, no doubt about it. He likes to fight. He's got that mean streak in him. A while left by Nunn, didn't land. Tony ducked under that one. Nunn trying to follow it up. You could feel the force of those blows. Uh, I know the fans have been crying for Mike to get more flat-footed. He's got to stay busy, though. If he's going to be flat-footed, he's got to throw punches because that's when he's susceptible to getting hit by counter-punches by Tony, like right there, except Tony missed. So none, if he's going to stand flat-footed like he is right now and not move around, he better stay busy. Of course, Lear, that was the advice of Tony's handlers as well, stay busy. They're trying to knock him out with one punch. Tony seems to have lost maybe just a, just a little bit of his aggressiveness. And, of course, Michael Nunn's had a lot to say about that as we're halfway through round four. Pretty close, pretty tough, pretty close fight so far. You know, I, I've been talking about how slippery uh, uh, Tony is, but none can frustrate you also. I mean, this man is a great defensive fighter. Doesn't keep his hands up like the normal great defensive fighter does, do, does but he does know how to use those shoulders to block punches, Tom. He never really has taken too many shots in his career because he's just so darn hard to hit. So, I mean, right there, he's just moving, moving his feet, using his head to avoid punches. Very few fighters can do that. Don with a big left, it missed. Had something on that though. Tony going toe to toe with none. He's he has cut off the ring. None has not done any of his uh, bicycling, backpedaling. He's chose to slug it out here with Tony. And that's not necessarily good because this is the type of fight Tony needs. Don with a couple of jabs there, body blow. Tony trying to act like it's not hurting him. That could prove costly. Thirty seconds to go in round four. Nunn with a couple of rat-a-tat-tat jabs there. I've Tony. always felt when fighters act like they're, they're not hurt by punches, that they some way are affected by it. Pretty good right by Tony. Got inside Nunn. Nunn's left. There's an uppercut by Tony that just missed. The best way to show a fighter that their punch didn't affect you, go right back and hit them. That's better than any smile could ever do. Inside 10 seconds now in round four. 
This has been a great fight so far. And there's the bell. Bell needs a little more zing on it, too. It's hard to hear. Hard to hear that, Bill. I'm anxious to hear what Bill Miller says now. All right, let's tune into the corners. We're keeping it too close. We got to start taking this fight over. Look at you. Beautiful skyline shot of the riverfront here in Davenport, Iowa, as we enter round five. Michael Nunn getting some advice from Angelo Dundee. Well, we did hear Bill Miller said you got to start taking this fight over to James Tony, and that's that's true. I mean, Tony's just doing enough to be in the fight, but not doing enough to win it. And if he keeps on going at this pace, he may frustrate none. He may go the distance with none, but he's not going to beat none. And here, you don't need a moral victory. You got to win. There you see the Campu box, 134 thrown by none. He lands 51 of them. He's virtually doubled the amount of punches thrown so far. Well, that's uh, normal Michael Nunn M.O. We are underway here in round five. Scheduled for 12. The IBF world. Tony stepped on his foot, but that's a normal uh, occurrence when a right-hander is facing a left-hander. Their feet always seem to, you know, get crossed up. And you can see their toes are pretty much on top of each other there. Nunn starting to... Got to do a little more dancing, bobbing and weaving, which is his style. Zing in and out, come in and land a few. Well, Tony mentioned uh, in the press conference a few days ago that Nunn was going to run like a deer, and, and he was going to be the deer hunter. Well, yeah. here goes Nunn running. Let's see what Tony can do about it now. Yep. Mr. Tony said he's uh, going to set some deer traps for Mr. Nunn. We'll see if he sets any. Well, this is the one thing I do like about the boxing business, uh, Tom. After all the talking is said and done, we see who can stand behind it. That's where it's done, in the ring, not in the lobbies or in the press rooms. I'm trying to get Tony to chase him now. Gives him a little back of the hand there. Tony with a big right. I've always told our fighters, you know, the ones that talk and can't stand behind it, I tell them, don't say anything. I want to see the action. Forget the words. The ones that can talk and back it up, I let them run off at the mouth. That's right. Couple of good jabs by Tony there, got inside none. Yeah, but to Tony's not putting any body into these punches either, you know. Those are kind of like love taps. That's not going to do anything to none. If he wants to get none's respect, he better dig him in there. There's a big uppercut by Tony that missed. None's just kind of taken there, saying, well, let's see what you got. Now, none sitting on those ropes, doing nothing, looking over to his corner to Angelo, shaking his head like everything's under control. You know, I'd rather see him going out there throwing punches, countering Tony's uh, uh, punches. Tony throwing a lot of punches now that aren't hitting. None with a body shot. Hits him side of the head. Michael Nunn's got Tony reeling just a little bit now. Crowd picking Nunn's up. Only, Tony comes right back. Nunn's only connected on one of those, Tom. Tony uh, was, was moving away from all those punches. Only got hit with one real solid shot. Now they tie up a little bit. 40 seconds left in round five. The fans are getting everything they want so far. Big body, body shot, shot by yeah. Nunn. Tony comes right back with a right jab. Left by none reaches. Nearing the 20 second mark around five. None again. Getting inside with a couple of jabs. They're not hard jabs, but they are getting in. Inside 10 seconds now. And we'll see if anybody throws any last second haymaker or not and that is the end of round five james tony and michael nunn giving the fans their money's worth here rumble on the riverbank let's go to the corner right okay now come on give me a give me give me a sponge okay now i want you moving this fight we're giving it up in here thank you sir all right show me then let's go out there and take over now hear me let's take over this fight now give me a little water Let's make a move now. We need it now. It's time to turn the steam on now. Well, good time words of encouragement by uh, Bill Miller in there to tell him to turn on the steam, but he's been saying that the last few rounds, and, and Tony really hasn't taken uh, the advice to, uh, to none. Think he's getting a little tired? 
No, I don't think he's getting tired. I just think he's getting frustrated also trying to hit none. He's a tough, uh, tough guy to fight out there. And right now, if Tony doesn't pick it up, the only way he's going to have lights out on none is if we have a power shortage here because he's not going <laughs> to knock out none with these type of uh, offensive assaults. Down and Tony as we start round six. Not very quick on his feet. Tony just kind of plodding after him. Still wondering why he's got that Jewish star on his trunks. I'll have to find that out later. I'm sure there's a message in there. Just we'll thought I'd throw that one in there, Tom, why we didn't have any action. I see that. Wild left by Tony. None ducks under it. That's what Tony's got to do. He's got to let those punches fly. Uh, the only the only thing that happens though when he starts throwing from the outside like that none does have the advantage because his height and reach but they those are the type of chances you've got to take as a challenger yeah and of course michael nunn was in tony's shoes uh, three years ago he knows finally got a title shot you got to take advantage of it. i'm ducking under that right by tony inside two minutes now in round six the ibf world middleweight title on the line Michael Nunn, 36 and 0. James Tony, only a tie among his 26 fights. Hey, we just saw Nunn do what he was holding. Uh, Tony and Nunn were holding one another, and Nunn had his left hand free and was throwing punches. I can remember for five and a half years, my brother Joe always telling Nunn, when you're holding, make sure you, you have one hand free to throw punches. And it's very effective. Nunn just got away with it just there. Tony with a wild left, doesn't land. It's a right in there on none there. Had a little something on it. None just keeps that head. That head's always moving. None kind of looked over at the Tony corner and said, he's not hurting me. He's kind of looked over. And I can see why with the way that Tony's thrown those punches. He doesn't have any power on him. Pretty good left by none. Tony backpedaling just a little bit. And Michael kind of has picked up the fight once again. There goes Tony with a backhand punch. I haven't seen that uh, for years. There's none and Tony. Probably Tony's best round since the beginning of the fight, yeah. Tom. Tony certainly more than holding his own in this bout. But this is where Nunn's been notorious on stealing rounds towards the end of the uh, end of the rounds. But uh, here he hasn't thrown anything in the last 10, 15 seconds. All right, there it is. The end of round six. We're halfway through. And what has been a very, very hotly contested fight so far. Michael Nunn. And James Tony, let's pick him up in the corner. You want to get back into it? Okay, now is the time to make you move. All right, the guy showed you he can be hit, can't he? Give us some. All right, so get back in it now. Let's put some punches together. What I like, I want you to pop, pop, move over. When the guy comes straight at you, nail him with that left hand. Okay? Give it. I give it. Give me the water. Open him out wide. That'll be. There you see Tony with more, more punches hey, thrown in that round. Okay. But none landed more of his. Well, when you have stats like this here. with the CompuBox, they're very misleading at times with a fighter like Nunn because Nunn's the type of guy that'll flick out a jab, and doing that in a, a three-second time period, you could have five, six jabs with as quick as Nunn is. All right, we are underway here. The second half of the fight, Tom, Round right seven. now, we're going to see what happens. I mentioned earlier in the fight that I felt Tony would get be the stronger of the two. Right now, it's not happening. None still looks the fresher of the two. We'll see what all this stamina and training uh, mean right now. Of course, willpower. Not in Tony. We're into the home stretch. Both boxers in the center of the ring now just kind of feeling each other out. Tony tries to get in a body shot, parried by none. See, 
Nunn's doing exactly what Angela wanted them to do this round, except he, Angela told him to throw that left hand. And right now, Nunn's got to realize when he throws that jab out there to follow it up with the left hand. If he doesn't do that, Tony comes in with that right hand like that. Tony with a good, good right. And Nunn backpedal just briefly. Tony shows he can certainly take a punch, no doubt about that. Well, neither fighter have really been hit with what I would call what uh, a one-punch uh, knockout shot yet. No oh, haymakers yet. Huh? But I feel if either one of them were hit with a good shot, they'd both be able to take it. none has got an excellent chin. And I've seen Tony uh, get hit in his last two fights, and he's taking good shots. Minute and a half gone in round seven. Tony should forget about his pants coming down and throw some shots because when he does that, that's quick enough to come right back and throw a shot when he's got both hands pulled up his pants. You want to get caught with your pants down? Is that what you're saying, Dan? Well, you will with none throwing them at you. Nearing the minute mark, round seven. Both fighters have uh, thrown some punches this round, but neither one's really landed. Been a pretty even round. They tie up, tie up in the corners just a little bit. There's, There's a good right hand. hand. Tony throws that right. He seems to land it. Uh, you wonder why he doesn't throw it a little more. Well, you know, sometimes Nunn keeps you in that position where he keeps you off balance. But if Nunn doesn't start throwing that left and Tony uh, understands that it, that right's open every time, it could start being his big punch. Body shot by none as we near the 22nd mark of round seven. Big uppercut by Michael. He likes that one. That got Colombe. Little combination on the ropes. Now a little talking by none. There's his end of the round uh, theatrics. It'll steal him some points. Well, none learned this trick from his idol, Sugar Ray Leonard. Ray was one of the best at that. At the last 20 seconds of every round, he'd come out and steal the rounds. I used to hate it when Nunn used to do it while he was coming up with us, but he was so good of a, an athlete, he got away with it. And they're a little uh, nodding, a little gamesmanship at the end of that round, as we've seen all throughout the week. And, of course, later on at the post that's my press conference, they'll have their arms around each other. get back in this fight. That's we got to fight this guy. You hear me? We got the doggy. This has to be the Tony right hand. Yeah. yeah good right his hand head right around. Well, he caught that one pretty flush and shook it off. Now we see none coming back near the end of the round. Here's where he had Tony against the ropes. That's, that's, that's a lot of punches, but really no damage. That's vintage Michael Nunn throwing five, six, seven punches and talking why he's doing it. A lot of action. We have a uh, a guy more worried about fashion. If his shorts are dropping, and we got none doing a little verbal, little verbal jabs to go along with the others. And and Tony's listening to him. Well, none tells him to stop, and Tony listens. None wanted to stop there and get something off the ring. And uh, fighters usually don't listen to referees. Since when do they listen to other fighters? I guess it's hometown courtesy. Nunn keeping that, trying to keep that right jab going so we can land the left, but Tony's done a pretty good job. There's Nunn switching the right hand. He used to do that a lot in the gym back at home, but didn't utilize it too much in fights. I expect him to go right back to the softball stance. He usually does it for a little break. Some contact there by both fighters as they tie up. None can go lefty rider, but there's the right hand. That's what he got the left what, hand back. That's what Tony's got to do. When Nunn's throwing that jab out, he's got to counter with that right hand. It's, it's been hitting Nunn uh, every time he th he's thrown it. Tony's stalking Nunn now a little bit. See, Michael, he's got the strength and, and size over all of these opponents he's fought lately. Curry and then the Scarlet. He's got to go out there and take it to him. Yeah, that's really against the ropes there. There's a couple landed by Tony as none was doing some talking and didn't cover up. Shouldn't have shaken his head. He should have come right back and started throwing punches rather than talking. Sometimes a little uh, jiving can get you in trouble. None, uh, none paid for it that time. 
That was a good right by Tony. Still on the shoulder there. And the right is the right has been there. Body blow blocked by none. We near the minute mark of round eight. See all those tactics that Mike uses against the ropes are good if you're if you're way ahead in the fight and all that. Why he receives a great left hook from Tony. But what he's got to do is he can't play games like that. He's got to go out there and he's got to take these guys seriously. He should be just throwing punches constantly at Tony. Gets hit with another overhand right. We're heading toward 30 seconds left in round eight. And uh, Tony has done some damage to none here this round. And they, his corner is telling him to keep it coming. Keep coming at him. And Tony is responding. There's that right again. You just get the feeling one of these times that right is really going to land. If none's not careful. Well, he hasn't been, and it's landed. It just hasn't affected none much. The question is, what will it, the next four rounds, what will happen? Five seconds to go in round eight. For the last two rounds, Tony has one in my book. And you can just kind of tell by the way the crowd applauds after each round. I think they feel that way too. Uh, kind of a uh, reluctant applause for uh, Nunn. Get the heck off of it. I think they realize that Nunn's in for a fight. No doubt about it. Getting ready for round nine. Well, we're going to find out exactly who's in the better shape right now. I, I, I got to say this, though. Tony has kept busy. He's been an active fighter for two and a half years, and that's definitely in his, in his favor right now. Michael, his last fight being October, prior to that, April, he has not been an active fighter, which means that he hasn't been in that gym. These are tough, tough rounds right now. As you can see, the last round, it was even up percentage-wise as far as punches uh, being accurately thrown. Here's that action on the ropes. Tony actually pushes him over. Nunn's hanging over. And while he's talking, Tony got in an uppercut. Well, right now, Tom, I see Tony coming on those last two rounds, but Nunn built, built up a big early lead. First round, I felt, was kind of even, and then after that, Nunn kind of took over. But right now, Tony's back into the fight. He's got to win the next few rounds, so to give himself an opportunity to win a decision here. Yeah, that's it, and Nunn a slight leader. Of course, the champion's going to get the benefit of it out. you got to pretty much take the champion out if you're a challenger. Fair slip by uh, Nunn there. You notice how Nunn uses those ropes, Tom? Yeah. Throughout his career, he's, he's always loved to play around on those ropes. He's Does he got like that. loose ropes, tight ropes? We say these well, ropes? as you can see, these ropes, these are these are Michael Nunn ropes. He, he saw Ali use those ropes against George Foreman. And ever since, Nunn's always liked to stay on those ropes, bend down, and do the things that he did, except for the first time I've ever seen a fighter take advantage of Nunn on those ropes. That was Tony when Nunn was bouncing around on it. As loose as they are, Tony took advantage of it offensively. Inside two minutes here in round nine, they clinch up. If those ropes were a little bit tighter, none wouldn't, wouldn't be able to dip down as far, and Tony would be in a better range to hit none when he was on the ropes. Well, the home, the home ring advantage, you might say, just like water in that grass before a home plate. Tony again tries to get that ride in. Again, Tony's the busier fighter in this round also. Oh, there, that one got him. That one got home. He's got none hurt a little bit. Some vicious right left by Tony, and Tony trying to follow up on it. Nunn's punching. That uppercut shook Nunn's head, too. Michael now fighting for survival. And trying to take it right back. Good left by Nunn. Well, if Tony uh, if Nunn needed a wake-up call, he just got it. Now the crowd getting into it. As Nunn responds, Tony comes back with the right. Tony's corner is up. They like the way their fighter's going at it. Well, I think none realized this in the last, last 30 seconds that he got hit pretty well by Tony, and he better get serious if he wasn't. Now none has been throwing the leather, but Tony's come back. Long right by Tony, and now none using those ropes again to his advantage as he ducks out of the way of a vicious right by Tony. That would have landed. None would have really been in trouble. They're looking, uh, saw none 
Gaze at the corner a little bit. At this Ooh. stage of the fight, what's he looking for? Right now, he better be looking for a hammer because Tony's uh, taking advantage of Nunn looking everywhere else. Tony's hit him with some great shots this round. This round, clearly. Oh, Nunn is hurt. Tony. I'm telling you right now. His legs are wobbly there. Big, big round for James Tony. And the crowd now, kind of like a seventh inning stretch, has decided they better get up and uh, get Michael into it. And Nunn, you can just tell the way Tony's corner. Let's listen in. You're going to have to come down the wire just like that there. And put, you can put this down his back. You can put this down the back if you put some punches together you like that. You understand the point. If you put him on his back, if you put your punches together like you're doing now. Show this guy. Well, he put some punches together here. Look at that right. Nunn's head slapping back. The right again. Tony with a barrage of punches. And Nunn trying to come back. Well, Nunn did come back in that last round, but then Tony came right back, and that's a sign of a of a kid that wants to win this fight. You know, uh, Tony kind of woke up, and then at the beginning of the round, Nunn put on his offensive spurt, and then Tony came back. Nunn was looking in the corner for some advice. He better keep his mind on in the center of the ring. I think Michael, if Michael Nunn doesn't know he's into a fight, something's wrong. He's... And Tony, appearing more confident with each round there. He probably has taken the last two rounds. This fight is very, very close right now. I've, I've got him taking the last three rounds and hurting none in the last round. Michael well, Nunn's, not, a, Nunn's a champion. And he's got to show what champions are made of right now. The setting is his. Hometown fight, hometown crowd, and James Tony's rode into Dodge and done a pretty good job against the sheriff so I've, far. I've never seen this type of look in Nunn's face as, as far as being inside the ring. He actually realizes that he's in a fight. It's the first time that I can remember ever seeing Nunn in trouble. You can see it in his eyes just a little bit. Not quite so cocksure. Tony following it up. Trying to get Nunn on the ropes. Michael using that speed. Tom Cornelis and Dan Goosen here with you. Ringside on the riverside in Davenport, Iowa. There's that right by Tony again. And Nunn just hasn't been able to really defense that when Tony's gotten it in. And his crowd says, keep coming at him. You know, it, it's Tony's ironic. Tony's had a great game plan, Dan. Well, the game plan was to stay there during the early rounds with Nunn. And he succeeded in doing that. Now he's throwing a lot more punches. He's a lot more effective. And Nunn's a lot more tired. Because of that now, Tony's a lot more accurate with his punches. What does, uh, how close this fight is? What does this do to Nunn's uh, confidence? Well, to me, Tony's won the last three rounds, but he just gave Nunn a shot to come back into it. I don't think Tony can afford to play around, act like he's playing possum. He should be out there throwing punches, trying to win this championship. He's not going to uh, endear himself to the judges acting that way. We're inside a minute. Ooh, good right uh, counter by Nunn. And this, I think the stage is set for quite a finish in this one. It'll be a no holes barred final two rounds. Tony shows no signs of slacking off. And Nunn has to reach down a little bit here and find out what got him to 36 and 0. Big right by Tony. Nunn doing his best to duck out of the way. Crowd's chanting for Michael. Those lefts just won't go. Well, the fans haven't had much to cheer about here for their hometown hero, none. They're trying to spur him on right now to, uh, to get Tony out of there. Well, he just hurt him right there. Another, he another just hurt big Nunn right. right there with a good right hand. And Nunn goes back to that corner, and he's just a, just a little shaky. I'm telling you right now, just looking in the corner right now at Nunn, he is not there right now physically. Running out of rounds. We got to dog this man. We got to go out there and fight him all night, the rest of the way. We can't give up nothing else. We need every round. Hmm. Now, Mike, you only got six minutes, son. Don't be sloppy on me. And don't go reaching. Get these eyes out. Okay. And don't go reaching. I don't want you reaching. 
I want you to pop, pop, move over. Move to your right. See, the guy's trying to step on your feet, right? Okay. Let's go. You're too small for this guy. My piece. I got it. There you go. Pop, pop, baby. Well, right now, Angelo's giving him good advice, but I, I don't think good advice right now is going to help none. I think what's going to do it is whether follow. or not he's got the energy to stay there with Tony. All right, round 11. Schedule to go 12. Both fighters go out for an early clinch. Crowd chanting Michael, but Tony's done a pretty good job of, as they say, taking the crowd a little bit out of it. This is what happens when you're a champion. Everyone comes gunning for you, and you make an average fighter a championship caliber fighter just because he's fighting you. And this is what's happened to Tony right now. He's up another level, big level up in his career right now, and he's going head-to-head -to -head with the champion. He's letting it all out, no doubt about it. Tom Bellis, Dan Goosen with you, Davenport, Iowa. Michael Nunn's hometown, and James Tony's doing his best to spoil the party. But Tony had that look at the beginning of the fight tonight when he when he was uh, standing there for the introductions, and he was unfazed with everything. He was just going to come out here to do a job. And right now, he's done it. And it's been that right hand that has been Nunn's nemesis. Nunn using the ropes. Tony takes a wild swing, falls into him, and there's vintage Nunn. On the ropes, big right hand by Tony. Just about the time Nunn starts to get the momentum, that right hand comes crashing and sends him back. Inside, a minute 40 here in round 11. As a, as a boxing manager, Tom, I never felt safe with any type of decision. It, oh, the, that's a combination of a good shot and Nunn going backwards. A little momentum provided by Tony sent Nunn back against the ropes. But what I was saying is I never felt comfortable taking any fight on a decision because you never know how another judge was looking at something. And if Tony wants his championship for sure, he better try to knock Nunn down. Oh, he did it. Right there. He came back with a left and Nunn is down. Get, Michael they, Nunn. They better get their corner Michael off, Nunn. I'll tell you. This corner is up. James Nunn Tony he's not going to make it up. And I don't think he's Nunn's going to get up. His crowd trying to get him back. Nunn looking at it, well, and they're going to let him fight. I'll With tell you, he's seconds on to go. Street Nunn right better now. be careful. Nunn better be careful. Ooh. He's down. He's hurt. Will they stop this fight? Tony trying to finish him off. The towel he, is no. thrown in. I'll tell they you. They threw the towel in. James Tony. It's that left just hook. They stopped it. Michael We've got Nunn. a new IBF middleweight champion of the world. We have a new IBF middleweight champion of the world. James Amazing, lights up. Tony, unbelievable. He has knocked I mean, out Michael Nunn in his hometown. Nunn did not know what hit him. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 2 minutes, 14 seconds of the 11th round. Referee stops the bout. The winner by TKO and new IBF middleweight champion of the world. Let's talk I've got to James Tony champion. sitting right here with me in the ring with his new IBF middleweight championship belt. You said you were going to bring it back to Detroit, and you're doing it. Or I should say Michigan. Well, first of all, I'd like to say this is a late birthday for my manager, Jack Callen, and an early mother to give for my mother, Sherry Tony, yes. who helped me and supported me so Thank much you. throughout my young career. And I want to thank everybody back at home at CMI Health and Tennis Club for giving me all the support. Everybody began, I'm going to bring the belt home, baby. Got it, baby. Yeah. James, baby girl. Let me go, baby. And one more, I can't forget my little sweetheart, Elizabeth. Here's that sign, sweetheart. I'm all right. Baby girl, baby. All right, let me ask you a couple questions about the fight. First off, James. James, you lost a lot of the early rounds. In fact, most of the uh, early rounds and a few of the middle rounds. Was Did you ever get discouraged? How did you keep the presence of mind to stay in this fight and to come back as well as you did? Well, I told you before, early this morning, the crowd don't mean nothing. They can't come and help him win the fight. And so between the rounds, Papa Magic, Bill Miller was telling me, keep it cool, you gotta keep the pressure on him. We lost that round. And I had to get with him, you know, I had to keep the pressure on him. And I knew sooner or later I was wearing him down. And I knew I would get to him sooner or later in that eleventh round. Now I heard him in the tenth round really with that left hook in the right hand. And I said, I got this I got him now. I got him now. So in the eleventh round I just capitalized on him. Uh, let me ask you something, James. Was there ever a point in this fight because you took some great shots? that you got a little wobbly or hurt. Uh, I don't know if you were playing possum or if you were really hurt a couple he times. Hurt. He didn't hurt. This is a honest to God truth. Michael Nunn, did, Michael Nunn did not hurt me. He quickened everything, but he did not hurt me at all. If you look at the punch, I was slipping every shot he was trying to th throw at me. And I was like, you know, yeah, come on. Try to suck him in. You know what I'm saying? Right. 
Do you think the new conditioning, the training program that you went through, is that, is that what won you this title? Yes, that's definitely right. You know, everybody at CMI was great, great, you know, supportive of me. I trained hard, and Jackie got, got, me, got me facilities that I needed to get in great shape for world championship fight. And I just knew that once I get him with a good solid shot, he was all mine. Well, it, it took you a while, and you and you did listen to your corner, Bill Miller, who told you, don't give up, you've got to stay in this fight, you got to dog him, you got to stay on him, and you did exactly that, and it paid off for you in the end. Of course, you know, I, I listen, like you said, the key to the fight is listen to your corner people. And if you listen to them, you can't, you can't go wrong. You, Bill, let me ask you a question. Let me get you in here, because I know you've worked so darn hard with um, with uh, James Tony. Uh, wh where do you go from here with uh, with James? James, what? Well, we can't go nowhere but up. It's, it's time for him to get some of the mega bucks. All right, listen, James, I'm going to let you enjoy your victory. Uh, go ahead, I one more say, thing. Thanks to Robert Lee, the IBF, for the giving me the you know, opportunity to fight for his title. And thanks to Mr. Bob Aaron for giving me the opportunity. And thanks again, thank Michael Nunn, because, you know, he didn't have to fight me. could have fought Reggie Johnson, but he gave me the shot. That's right. Go enjoy your title. Great victory for all of you. And let me get Michael uh, Nunn in here. Angelo Dundee told you in the corner, he said, Mike, don't get sloppy on me. Is that what happened? Yeah, that's what happened. Got a little sloppy. Angelo told me to get sloppy. Got a little sloppy, but I'll be back. Yeah, I, I bet you will, Mike. What are you going to do? Are you going to take a little rest after this right now? and then come back and fight again. You know, I'm a true champion. I'll come back. Let me tell you something. I never saw you look sharper. You look great in this fight. You, you, you put on a dazzling display of boxing. You surrounded him with a lot of punches. Did he take a great shot from you? He took a pretty good shot. Yeah, he took some good shots. You know, I can't take it from him. He took a great shot. All right, Michael, listen. Uh, all the best to you, and I hope you come back soon and get that title back. All right, take care.